people are still experiencing sticker shock over their car tab fees as a result of Sound Transit 3. What are lawmakers doing to help? Well, Sound Transit 3 continues to be very controversial. I think that the voters, uh, when they approved Sound Transit 3, uh, didn't have a lot of information uh, at their disposal when they made those uh, decisions to pass the $54 billion tax package. Sound Transit 3 is going to increase taxes in three categories, property taxes, sales tax, and car tab fees. And so I've heard from a lot of constituents who are really shocked that they're now going to pay upwards of $1,000 per vehicle to uh, renew their card tab fees. Uh, Sound Transit originally had been using an inflated appraisal uh, f uh, to assess uh, the, the amount of card tab fees that would be paid per vehicle. Uh, so what we've done now is uh, recently we passed a bill here on the House floor that would impose a more realistic appraisal uh, value to cars and require Sound Transit to have a more uh, realistic uh, value-based uh, appraisal method for um, assigning value to a car for purposes of car tap fees. Uh, it didn't go far enough. I think there are other ways uh, to value vehicles uh, that are more fair to consumers and more fair to those who rely on their vehicles for work and so forth. But the bill was a step in the right direction and therefore I supported it. But we're going to again hopefully revisit this issue in future sessions to make sure that we um, have fairness and equity in the way we um, attribute value to our vehicles for purposes of car tap fees. You've co-sponsored a bill that would help combat the opioid crisis in Washington State. Can you tell me about it? Well, the, the opioid crisis in Washington State is very real. Uh, it affects families across all demographic lines, all socioeconomic levels. Uh, it's a very real and persistent threat to our folks out there in our communities. Approximately 700 Washingtonians last year died from the, as a result of opioid addiction and opioid overdose. Uh, it's a leading cause of hospitalizations and it really is becoming a, a crisis epidemic level. So I've co-sponsored a bill, House Bill 2489, uh, which will um, seek to intervene and provide evidence-based intervention measures uh, to uh, our communities uh, as we try to grapple with this addiction crisis. Um, it will also provide uh, resources for local jurisdictions, cities, counties, as well as first responders to intervene appropriately when they come uh, upon someone who is in opioid crisis. Uh, what we really need to do is um, enhance our funding for treatment beds. We also need to give our first responders the tools to, uh, to um, rather than uh, divert to the uh, judicial system, divert to uh, treatment programs. And in fact, there's other legislation, uh, one of which is being uh, prime sponsored by my colleague, uh, Representative Dave Hayes from Snohomish County, that will do a pilot program that's very innovative and co-locate social workers with our first responders and law enforcement agent officers who are out there on the streets to make those really uh, cr uh, critical uh, interventions right then and there when they come across someone who's under opioid addiction so we can get the, those folks into treatment where uh, they have a chance of success. Even though lawmakers approved a bill last year to fully fund education as dictated by our state constitution, the state Supreme Court is still holding the legislature in contempt. Why is that? Well, we made historic uh, gains last year with our McCleary uh, legislation that, uh, and the court has actually uh, concluded that the measures we enacted last year um, did satisfy our McCleary obligation, they were constitutional, and that they will go towards satisfying our McCleary obligation. Um, unfortunately, the court also decided that our timeline was insufficient, uh, that we needed to provide a solution by 2018. However, the legislation adopted last year on a bipartisan manner, both chambers signed by the governor, really didn't allocate the funding until 2019. So we're in this conundrum now where we have to um, find a billion dollars additional money for the 2018 um, short session, uh, the, the, the uh, supplemental operating budget, to satisfy the court's uh, most recent pronouncement that funding needs to be there for 2018. Uh, we're working through that process now. I'm, I'm confident that we will be able to uh, come up with some solutions to satisfy the court's mandate that uh, additional uh, dollars are uh, funded this year uh, in furtherance of my, our McCleary obligation and I look forward to informing the voters and our constituents after the session to let them know what uh, solutions we've, we've come up with.